I had a really cool experience today and I kind of want to try to capture that. Um, I've put three instructionals out on Jiu Jitsu X right now and uh, you know when I started doing the instructionals I knew kind of being a master's competitor that I wasn't going to probably be like some type of big sale and uh, sell a lot of copies. I'm not, I'm not a big name in Jiu Jitsu but I've put a lot of work into my details and uh, I've really tried to improve my game and improve my instructing so that you know when I when I offer an instructional or when I teach that I you know I, I provide really good uh, jiu-jitsu that that can work effectively in competition not just look good but um, so I put my three instructionals out and uh, I had somebody reach out John reached out to me on um, Instagram and uh, you know he just basically kind of told me that he, he was watching my content and uh, you know we just kind of the conversation kind of started from there and I you know next thing I know I'm like okay he he lives up by Chicago that's not that far of a drive and, and you know I offer I offer to everyone like I'm constantly like hey look if you want to come train send me a message as long as I have a free weekend I'm gonna make this work and uh, so you know I just kind of told him the same thing I was like look uh, he had questions about the instructionals or just kind of some things we we're going over on the details and I said you know if, if you ever want to make the drive down to Effingham and, and we can train and uh, you know let's it's a little you know sometimes it's nicer in person right to get the details and, and watching an instructional is great but it never gives you like you don't get to feel exactly how that pressure feels or experience what that grip is is like and uh, you know, the cool thing was, I mean, I, I want to say this conversation started a week or two ago, and, uh, and you know, here he is, right? Him, him and his son drive down probably four hours, and then the night before, there's actually a snowstorm. Not so, it wasn't horrible, but, you know, like, just really cool that jiu-jitsu has taken me to this point, right? Where basically, I've been able to create some instructionals. And get some real. I mean, when I started jujitsu, I, I I remember being where everyone is right now, right? Like looking at what the details were, uh, making these mistakes, using too much energy, not breathing, you know, squeezing too hard. So that that's kind of cool that I get to share that knowledge now. Like like this is my tenth year in jujitsu, and uh, you know, to be in the place that I'm in is is really cool feeling. But uh, he, he decides to make the drive down here on a Saturday morning with his son. And, uh, you know, I, the big thing, if, if I meet someone and they don't know their game, this is typically like how I do my private lessons or, or even some of my seminars. I, like, I don't like to just base my, my teaching off what I want to teach. And sometimes when I do a seminar, I will do that. But, like, when you actually get to work one-on-one -on -one with someone, everybody's different. So I don't want to just teach the same stuff everyone, right? Like as an instructor, jiu-jitsu is like always evolving. It's always changing. And everybody's different. Every body, uh, style, height, weight, all of that's different. So like I don't want to necessarily just stick somebody exactly to my game because I feel like that limits them. So I, I want to roll with everyone. Everyone that comes in, I, I try to roll with them. I try to analyze their game, see where their weaknesses are, see where their strengths, and then build off that. I think that's the really important thing. One, to give you a unique style of game, but two, to make you more feel comfortable, right? Like, when you when you dress, you know, like, you want to be comfortable with whatever you wear, right? And uh, I, I think jiu-jitsu applies the same way. It, you know, you're, you're putting on something, and if you're putting on something that doesn't feel right for you, it's going to be a lot harder. Uh, so after we, I rolled with both of them and I kind of like, I, they wanted to have more confidence with their takedowns. And uh, if, as you can see like right now, I'm kind of going over the concept of breaking grips and how to maintain those grips, how to break the grip, how to make the grip stronger, um, you know, when you're pushing and reinforcing your grips. That way I'm basically explaining that you're going to get a chain reaction, right? Like I want them focusing so much on my grip that as they're working on, on breaking that grip, I, th I'm shooting on their legs or I'm setting up the guard pull. And, uh, and that's basically what I'm going over. Like, exact for me, 
I, I, you know, like we have, of course, many different takedowns. I've always preferred like the single legs, uh, the arm drags, just because it puts me on the outside of my opponent and I don't get sprawled on. Not saying that I'm not, you know, I love double leg takedowns. It, it's just one of those things that as far as in tournament and competition, for me, uh, again, going to the outside and not getting sprawled on. It, even if like I mess up the takedown, a lot of times I can get to a guard or I can get back to my feet where I'm not fighting in a turtle now. So that's that's just my personal opinion. And they wanted to ask more information on that. So I'm, I'm just kind of chaining of how I control the sleeve here. I'm pushing a sleeve away and then how I'm dropping the lead knee and then trying to make sure that I immediately hide that back foot so he can't counter grab it or anything. But uh, I, I really I like to try to chain, you know, the outside single leg here. And then if they somehow get that foot back, I chain from that. And as they're pushing the foot back, I'll set up the arm drag because I'll still have the same sleeve to maintain that control and to maintain getting the arm drag or, or the single leg, basically. And, uh, you know, as I'm basically showing them some of these things, one thing I'm explaining to them, I think sometimes we're so, we're in a rush right to get to the next position or to do the next step and I think that's what it was was his son was trying to force drilling the technique and I think sometimes we got to slow everything down right I think we try to do it so fast that when I'm drilling I'm I'm trying to micromanage every detail right like how I'm dropping the lead knee how I'm stepping how I'm switching my hips how I'm coming up how I want to be uh, you know a weight or a, a frame and like even here, I'm just showing him how to, you know, constantly be, you're, you're throwing your, your opponent by, your, you know, that's just the first detail. Then the second detail is being comfortable falling to your hip and using uh, their body as a, as a weight. So, and, you know, that's, it's cool. It's just cool to watch it all come together. It was cool to watch them training together, father and son, and uh, to even see like in the beginning, to, to watch him grow from when he started like just drilling right because we, we were about two and a half three hours um his base his movement his understanding you know all these things started to improve really uh really quickly and that was that was pretty cool to watch both of them work together and uh i, I think that's the coolest thing about the sport right now but right now i'm showing um basically how to stay you know in the headquarters how to hand fight, how to keep the posture, how to not just get knocked over. And, uh, you know, what I'm explaining to them is I have a student, Connor, and when he was like 17, he had a really good guard and he was a really good wrestler and could wrestle up. And I, I was basically explaining, like, I came in three hours a day and uh, I basically put myself in that headquarters position, one leg in the middle, one leg on the outside and what I used to call, you know, staying in the pocket. And, and you know, for the first month, Connor would knock me over. He would sweep me, he would wrestle up on me. And then after that, I started understanding all the different scenarios of what could happen. And, and I built off that. And once I built off that and I was able to like, not just get knocked over, not just get swept, but I could constantly keep their feet off me, it opened up my passing game like, a hundred times and now I have you know your leg weaves your knee cuts your X passes smashing the legs hooking the feet and I, I'm trying you know unfortunately three hours is never gonna be enough time to finish and put in all the details but from when they came in and the things they were doing to when they left I felt like it dramatically increased their game and to me that's awesome right to be able to see that to be able to see people get what you're saying and, and to pick it up so quickly and for those things to make sense and, and you know just improving their life just even a little bit right on the mats is pretty cool and then hopefully you you know that goes into their competition or into their live rounds and uh, you know it's like you're adding a little piece to each person you meet and uh, you know that's why I thought it was really cool that John reached out to me and that he made the time to come over here and you know we got to I got to get to know a little bit about his life. He got to know about my life and we got to train jujitsu and, uh, you know, th that's a really cool experience and an opportunity. So I definitely want to tell John, thank you for reaching out to me, but, uh, I want other people to 
also be encouraged to not, you know, I mean, to reach out to me, to send me a message if, if there's a video that you need, trying to figure out how to do a technique, whether it's my te technique or any technique, don't be afraid to like send me a message. I can try to put a video together, but anybody's welcome to visit anytime and uh, I'll do my best, you know, whether you just want a live roll or you want to go over technique, that's, that's the biggest thing that I'm trying to do right now is put enough content out there on technique that hopefully can just change uh, one or two people's lives. So I do appreciate you guys watching this and uh, for the last part, basically I'm just kind of going over the frame of the neck and exactly how to not frame with your wrist. And uh, when you frame with your wrist, you can get your whole, you know, you can collapse, collapse the arm. And, and the big thing is you want to be framing with your forearm and watching uh, getting put in like an arm triangle. And, and then just to finish up, just going over the X-Pass. And, and again, how to micro drill. One step is just drilling this. The next is moving the hips, moving his hips side to side and then setting up the X-Pass. But uh, yeah, there's a lot more. Like I said, I, I appreciate you guys for watching.